Hello, um, I'm going to begin with um, some Bible passages. Um, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 to 22. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off have been brought near in the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby bringing the hostility to an end. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. In Mark chapter 14 verses 23 and 24, Jesus took the cu a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and they all drank from it and he said to them, this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 20, Jesus said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. In Matthew 26, verse 28, Jesus said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Yes, in our home group, or at the moment email group, we have been using the book 100 More Standalone Bible Studies with our current focus being on the covenants between God and humanity in the Bible. Seven covenants being identified. One of the important things to remember about these covenants is that God is faithful. He always keeps his side of the bargain, and to bring it up to date, he doesn't self-isolate. Though the Bible relates a catalogue of humanity being unfaithful and reneging on their side of the bargain, but God, who is the same yesterday, today and forever, remains faithful. One of these covenants was that with Abraham, who would become Abraham, set out in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. 
I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Abraham was the father of the Jewish nation, but the blessing God promised to Abraham was not reserved just for the Jews, but all peoples on earth, i.e. Gentiles like me, and I expect most of you, could receive this blessing. In Old Testament times, there were opportunities be to become part of God's people. And the genealogy of Jesus at the beginning of Matthew's Gospel features Rahab and Ruth, who were not Jewish by birth. Also, in the temple in Jerusalem, there was the court of the Gentiles, where those who were not Jews by birth could pray and worship. Although by Jesus' time, this area had become more akin to a marketplace, and his anger at this is recorded in the Gospels. But there is also the sense that all peoples on earth will be blessed through you, was fulfilled by the coming of Jesus, who was, who as recorded in Matthew 1 verse 1, is the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. His life, death and resurrection opened the way and provided the opportunity for forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness of all the wrongs or sin that then enables reconciliation with God and each other. One thing that is common to the covenants is that God sets the terms. But those terms are there for humanity's good. Quoting from the book we're looking at, he's pointing out to us the way of blessing and well-being, the road to Shalom. Abraham was given the outward sign of male circumcision to be done down the generations as a physical reminder to future generations to live their lives in relationship with and faithful obedience to God. The important thing about the seventh and new covenant brought in by Jesus is that being part of it doesn't rely on a physical sign but on a spiritual sign, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is available to all who accept it. As Paul puts it in Romans 2 verse 29, no, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly. And circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people but from God. So God by his Holy Spirit never self-isolates himself from us. Let's make sure we don't self-isolate ourselves from him. Not only when things are difficult, as they are for many of us now, but when things are going well. God bless you.